What's up there guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing and today we're checking out some high heat grade PLA filament from US Monofilaments. Welcome back guys. So I've reviewed some US Monofilament uh, before and that was kind of like, uh, it wasn't high heat exactly and I honestly don't even know where the spool went anymore. But I reviewed that one before, you can check it up over here. This is a new version that they have, which I actually just recently checked out in the MakerBox, which printed very well. This may not be how you buy it if you do so buy this product. Uh, this was sent to me a little early than the release, as I don't even think you can buy this yet. In the MakerBox, it was an early release as well, from what I was told. But I do want to dig in and see what this is like. So again, this is the same as I had because I had a pre-production roll of their other PLA that the, I think that was just high heat, but this is a, so this is a NatureWorks 3D 850 high heat grade PLA. I don't know the specifics why that's different from the other high heat PLA they had. I just know it's different from what they were told me. Uh, 1.75 millimeters plus or minus 0.03, 190 to 230, annealing temperature 80 to 130 C, and then print bed temp is not needed or 50 to 70 C, standard PLA. Made in Vermont, and they got a little, little picture of Vermont there, look at them. Other than that, that's it. It's a black and white box. Again, this might not be how it actually comes to you if you so buy it. And here is the spool. It is in a vacuum sealed bag, non-resealable. We've got a couple desk kit packs in there. Now, actually, I didn't realize this was gonna be white. I had their clear in the maker box where this is white. So we've got a gargantuanly long <laughs> desk kit pack in there. That's crazy. Let's throw that in here to dry out. And I'll reuse that because I'm cheap. Here's the spool. Super duper sturdy, sturdy spool. Uh, it just has, it's just PLA HH1.75. The color is white and is one kilogram. The winding, you know, seven out of 10. You know, it's generally tight. It's pretty uniform. A couple of them kind of go a mish here and there but not too badly. It's got a nice hook on there to keep that on the spool. Yeah, I mean, aside from that, I don't really know much about it. I just really want to know how well is this going to print. So let's throw this on some printers and see what happened. All right, so what I'm doing with this film is, is that it was like insanely white. I mean, it turned out to be super duper white. So I went ahead and reprinted two projects that I'd previously done, which was the splicer mask and Casey Jones mask. Now the differences in these are, this was printed in one go. This entire print was printed at once on the Tivo Tornado. It held great. The support was a little bit mixed. Most of it stayed. Some of it got a little bit hinky and then ended up fixing itself. Support really isn't greatly needed on the back part of this anyways. It's mainly needed down underneath. I didn't do any post-processing on these yet, and that's gonna be just a different video, but I kinda of wanted to have these as something else to work on. Now, again, this was first printed in three parts that I tried to get rid of those uh, seams where the two parts joined together, but it didn't have a great success that. So I figured, okay, well, let me print it as one go, and maybe I will take the time and like sand this for the next, I don't know, month. And whenever I get some time, do some sanding on it, do some Bondo, we'll see. But it's a template to work on eventually. Then I did Casey Jones. Now the original Casey Jones that I did is up here. You can see up here? Yeah, you can see up here. And it was the damaged version. So I was able to do a dark wash on it and pull out some of that damaging effect that you would see in there, those dents in it, the scratches through it, and do that. This one, not so much. I want this to look nice. It's still gonna get a dark wash, not as dark as that one did. It's too dark to show that it's used, but not that it's been like beat on per se. All I did in this one again was pull out the supports. I did very little cleanup on it, but I'll take a file to it and some sanding paper and work on that as well. And again, sand down the whole face, try to get it as smooth as I possibly can. Again, this will be something that I work on over the next, you know, probably few months, but just to have on hand for when I get around to doing that kind of project. I will show you close-ups of those. And then I printed a whole bunch of little things here on the Monoprice Mini Delta printer, which I just received. All of these were printed on there, except for the coin. The coin was also a Tiber Tornado. But all these little things were, and this was also in the Tornado as a, uh, I printed this once before with, I don't remember what filament it was, uh, Canadian filament. 
but uh, just kind of a wavy vase. Just wanted to do at least one vase mode on a big print to see how it turned out for you know, more of that consistency aside of the, these ones you can kind of hide consistency issues with a big print, but the vase mode, there's no hiding it. So we can take a close look at that. All right, so here again is the Casey Jones mask. As you can see, there was some layers issues there. That was from the T4 Tornado itself. But overall, it came to be a pretty good print. Uh, again, consistencies aside were pretty good. Can't really see any, any oddities in there, except for, again, just the kind of rippling in the model. Some of that was, and some of it was actually just the printer itself. Then we have the splicer mask, which, again, is a huge, huge print. This is like 200 and some, 240 tall, I think it is. It's a pretty tall print. All in all, it's kind of low poly as you can kind of see those different faces in here and along there. But again, it came out really good. The support did a great job here underneath holding everything in there. Uh, I guess holding it away it should. Just once take some sandpaper to that, that'll smooth out really well. And there was a little bit of support that connected up here, which also did a good job. But yeah, this turned out to be really nice and a little bit of sanding on this and I'll be able to have a nice uh, mask out of it. All right, so here is the coin I did off of the t Tornado which was pretty good. There's a little bit of under extruding at the top. I think I could have added just a few more top layers to make that a little bit better. And then underneath it turned out pretty good as well, where you can see it did a nice job overall of support. It held up the way it's just supposed to. And around all of the cogs here, they turned out good also. Nice and rounded just the way they should be and whatnot. So yeah, this turned out to be pretty good. Now this one I did on the Monoprice Mini Delta printer. Top was great. Sidewalls was great. Bottom was horrible. And this was absolutely the printer as the middle section here was really good. It was the perimeter that it just did not adhere very well. And the auto bed loving was not on par for those points. I did reprint it again later, just the first row to turn out better, but I didn't really have time to do more prints uh, with this filament on there. So aside from the whole bottom being garbage, the quality on that printer actually is pretty good. I did a few vase modes as well. So this is just kind of that simple wood bowl that I did. I mean, you can see in my, my hand how small this is. It was a tiny, tiny print. But it really did turn out well. Got all the details in there. This is again on the i3, on the Mini Delta. Sorry, Monoprice Mini Delta. And then this is Angus's uh, flower pot, which also turned out really nice. There's a weird ripple here. I think it was just in the model. But vase mode, uh, there's a little stringing down there. I don't think the retraction actually was turned on for those little ones. I don't know why, but everything else it was all right. But again, mainly vase mode. And one little string here that didn't turn out very well. But I mean, it's, it's, it's rigid, it's flexible, which is surprising. It's fairly strong as well. I was not expecting it to be as strong. Uh, this with all those different uh, facets and everything in there, it makes it kind of a very rigid print. I'm gonna give this one of my kids and plant one of their flowers in or something. This I thought was gonna be bigger on that printer uh, to plant flowers in, but mm, it's a little tiny as it just fits in the palm of my hand. So here we have sort of layer slot. Now this is printed solids sample print for the MakerBox as one of these at 100% scale will take up one of those samples. And he turned out great on that little mini Delta. A little bit of uh, drooping on the front of the sword there, but everything on the back, the printed solid, the logo, everything came out really nice. And again, the film was very consistent. There was no over extrusions, under extrusions anywhere. I'm happy with the results. Uh, and finally, I got to zoom way out for this giant vase. This is a max size on the t bor Tornado. So it's, you know, just shy of 300 wide. Very big print, very wobbly. This takes like eight hours, I think, to print at 60 millimeters a second. So it's a humongous print. Uh, one, or as it was, three bottom layers, one perimeter obviously for vase mode. And again, very good uh, extrusions. It came off the bed really, really well. When I took this off in the, um, the PLA I did before, I can't remember the brand of it, uh, this had actually split uh, right along some of these here as I was peeling it off. There was none of that with this, which was really good to see. Maybe my first layer was just, just a little bit better this time than it was months ago when I did that review. Either way, it came off the bed very nicely, and I have a very nice bowl here, which I'll probably end up taking to the office and use like a candy bowl or something. It's fun. 
Before I continue on, uh, those close-ups were using a brand new camera. I'm actually using a new DSLR for my close-ups and SL2. Still getting a little bit adjusted to how I get the autofocus on that to work. It's a little different than my 6D, which I do my main recording on. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about that, the lighting and all that. I might need to pull another LED light to get a little more lighting for that camera as it doesn't pull as much in as my little point and shoot did, but I get a lot more control with that than I did with the point and shoot. So let me know what you thought about that. Anyways, back to this. I thought this worked out well. Uh, again, white, super duper white. Very, very happy with that. Uh, I, I hate getting filaments that kind of have that yellow tinge or just kind of like a dingy white. They don't have like that pure white color that you're really looking for. And this really does look pure white. And I do really like that. I'm hoping the rest of their filament comes out well also or comes turns out to be pretty good i'm going to be using that in some actual 3d printing projects i just picked the white to use as it's going to be a good base coat to do the mask projects that i have coming up and the other colors are funner so more fun funner is what we say in pittsburgh so yeah, I have a few other colors to use from them, which I'll be using in other projects. And obviously this only reflects this one roll, this one color, but stay tuned for more projects with their filament and you'll be able to see how it performs in future things. So I'm gonna thank US Monofilament uh, and also Folger Tech, who's the one selling these for them, for sending the filament to me. It was sent free of charge for the purpose of this review and to use for some future projects. So I thank them for that. And I hope you guys will go check some of that out. And because they sell it through Folger Tech, you guys can get a 5% discount with the coupon code down in the video description. Make sure you use that. It actually works to everything in the Folger Tech shop, but uh, definitely if you want to get a break on the filament, check that out. And that's going to wrap it up, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys either way what you thought about the filament. If you guys want to stay tuned to what's going on, hit that big subscribe button down there. Hit the bell icon to get a new notification when I upload new content. If you guys want me to have financially, best thing to do right below me is hit that Patreon link. Donate a dollar more. I appreciate that. They get you access to my Patreon feed and the after show, which I do after almost all my new videos. The money there helps me buy things for projects, hardware. You never know what it's going to be, but it really does help out quite a bit. Otherwise, you can tap out. There's one-time links down below, and there's affiliate links. Again, coupon code for this filament is down in the video description. So check that stuff out. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, happy printing.